Okay, back to Chicago. Of the McAllisters, Home Alone. Going to do a little Home Alone kind of tour of the locations. Uh, what do you think? I, I, I've got to get this out of you, Chuffers. What do you think Luke's gone on to Chicago for? Like, it is possible, I'm thinking, that because it's a random thing, like, kind of. Like, if I said cheap flights to America, like, right now, I bet I could, like, Chicago is one of the, like, I've been to Chicago because I went to Columbus, Ohio, and you fly from England to Chicago. Like, you know, you just, that's the end. It's the, if you're going to North America, or, like, if you're not going to New York, essentially, you go to Chicago. Do you know what I mean? It's like the, it's on the way, isn't it? Um, so if I did cheap flights, America, like, you know, random flights, it would probably offer me Chicago, won't it? My guess. New York, Melbourne, Orlando, Florida, you know. Do 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 de do de do 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 de do de do. Is it not just going to show me all the fucking flights? That's a guess anyway. Look, it's off. It's off me. Melbourne, Boston, and Washington. Melbourne's not in fucking. I can fly to Miami for one hundred and fifty pounds. Are you tripping? From Manchester, I can go from Manchester. No, I can't. I sort of can, but only on the wrong day, only on a certain day. It's interesting, actually. It gives you all the prices like that, look. Why did it tell me it was 150? On the 9th, I can go on the 9th for 187. So I think like, it's possible that you might have done that. You love Chicago. The lake is awesome. Really? It's not, is it like a... Was it someone invited him? I do, I do know that one of his um, chatters did invite him to America. I didn't know if they were in Chicago or not, but one of his like uh, mods, someone like that, said, why don't you come and stay with us? I think they were in Plymouth. I don't know if Plymouth is in Chicago. Um, he might have done this. Like, it might be that Chicago is a nice holiday destination, don't get me wrong. I just like... It feels like... Out of all the places in the world that you might go, it's well on the strange and random, though, yeah? Like, I'm, it might be nice, but who actually goes on holiday to Chicago and says, right, I, I'm going to... Places I want to go, Chicago... Like, he said he didn't know anything about the place. <laughs> He's got no idea what's going on there, so... Uh, it doesn't quite make sense to me that. Like, I can't quite get into my head why he's gone there. Um, if it's holidays, it's holidays, but... Uh, Going to Chicago on your own with no plan whatsoever seems weird. Like, I thought it might be a working trip, but... Like that. I, um... Here's another one. What about the Illuminati, right? And Eamon Holmes' Illuminati. Do they have um, Bohemian Grove in Chicago? Going to be doing some kind of... Uh... Peter Folding contact, doing a murder, doing something weird in Chicago. Yep, securing the bag. Absolutely. Could be all, all sorts of stuff like that, couldn't it? But then why would you vlog it? Gangster mob content. Gangster mob content. Um, so maybe he's doing something for the mob. Capone. Al Capone defecating uh, on the like microphone. That, Valentine's Day massacre. Might get myself down to the Shameless House as well, where they film Shameless in the US. Because I'm not too far away from the the UK one in Manchester, so might do a comparison on the locations. So a bit of location content is coming up. Going to the Chicago Bulls next Friday, so I'll see if I can do any filming there. They might. I don't see why I wouldn't be able to film. And uh, I'm just going to bait this. Dish... Say that again. I'm just going to do some kind of basic vlogging. You nearly said bait. Then is it like you know bait for us so that we get confused and watch him going to Chicago and it's just a big red herring? Uh, uh, whatever, kind of whatever comes up, really. Um, I'm I'm kind of going into this city. Here you go, Luke. I, I wish I could do Peter Folding's voice better. Here you are, Luke. Why don't you get yourself uh, Essex in it? Well, London in it. Well, 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 Peter Folding. Peter Folding. Why don't you get yourself over to Chicago, Luke? We'll get you over to Chicago. It'll totally baffle them. It'll baffle them, Luke. They won't know what you're doing. They won't know what you're doing, Luke. Get over to Chicago, Luke, and it'll baffle them. That's our 3D chess move. You won't just take a little holiday, Luke. It'll baffle them. 
it'll baffle them. Quite blind. I don't really 100% know what I'm doing. Apart, from I don't 100% know what I'm doing. Like, who does that? Who goes on holiday and doesn't really know what they're doing? I mean, if you're going to somewhere where there's a beach and a restaurant and this and that, you don't have to plan every day. But if you're going for a city break in Chicago, you kind of want to know what you're doing, don't you? Or do you want to wake up and just say, well, Chicago is my oyster. Let's go to the shops. Like, you know, it just feels weird that you wouldn't have any plan whatsoever. I know that they did the Home Alone house here, so I'll go and see the Home Alone house. That's on my bucket list. Like, you're just like, what? Like, <laughs> from the Home Alone stuff and the mob stuff, uh, and the Al Capone stuff, uh, everything else will be kind of... But it does make me think, you know, maybe I should just fuck off to Chicago too. <laughs> like, it's, it makes me think maybe I should go out. <laughs> and that's what they want me to do. <laughs> That's what Eddie wants me to do. He's always going on about it. Why don't you go out and fly your drone? Why don't you go out and do so? They want me to go out so they can come in my house. <laughs> I'm not leaving. <laughs> As and when I see it. Oh. Uh, and if anything's worthy of a little bit of content. So... A little bit of content? Yeah, I just wanted to let people know why I've not been on for 10, 11 days. Very, very busy with another project. Um... And also, yeah, a little bit of prep work for Chicago. Chicago! Luke ends up Luke ends up presenting the chase on the beat on the ITV after Bradley Walsh is done. And I have to live in a world where Luke's on the telly every day. You're in the big telly and everyone thinks he's great. Chicago! Three days time, so I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, tune in next week. I'll be live from the McAllister house on Saturday. No, you won't. Uh, there's a link. Well, there's a, you know, a live kind of waiting uh, on the channel for that. So I'll be live from that house, which should be quite nostalgic. And then, yeah, You've whatever never been happens, there. happens. Uh, the gun capital of the USA, I think. Murder capital, so. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> Yeah, I've got to watch where I go and where I don't go. But anyway, um, I will see you next week with my Chicago content. Chicago. Peace out for now. <laughs> Have you missed me? Woo. Chicago. It's just gone half five in the morning and I am showered, I'm ready, I'm packed and I'm on my way to Chicago. I just want to quickly say, when you do a travel vlog, right? What usually happens is you have a sort of... Um, actually, if I do map my friend, surely, surely my friend, he's done a travel vlog, like a classic one. I'm better off, better off showing one of my friends rather than just randomness. Um, So Matt will probably do it, right? It's a travel vlog. Good vlog. morning, YouTube! Well, it looks like we're on our holidays here in Turkey, one of the best countries in this part of the world. I'm joined, of course, by my amazing wife, Annabelle! So you see how he's like straight into it, there's music and stuff. Like if you're going to include the airport as well, what people tend to do is um, they have a uh, like a quick sort of sequence thing happen. Like Casey Neistat used to do loads of them. Um, I'm trying to find one where he's kind of done that. Like he's done it a couple where he's been out on a plane going places. Which day of the year is it? It's Holly Bob's day! Holiday! 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 
no one's going to stop me from having a good time because I'm a grown-up and I'm going to America. Excited. Hashtag excited.org. Are you excited? I am, yeah. Well, show me how excited you are. So excited I'm cleaning a spoon. Let's catch a plane. Look, see how it's like a piece of film that he's done. Taking ourselves a wee drone just for a few of the beautiful aerial shots. My, I'm hoping, my great hope is he's going to get there quickly and not mess about with all these bollocks at the start. They used to have people called cowmen and Native American Indians and they used to fight with weapons, but now they, they've, all, they've all been kicked out. And now all there is left is uh, Hollywood movie stars and the morbidly obese. I cannot wait. I'm going to eat my own body weight in donuts and steaks and I'm going to become one of those morbidly obese. See how like... I don't know. Like basically, you get through the airport. Well, it's like a, an overly noisy corporate event. That's what it's all about these days. A lot of these travel vloggers like to talk in airports, don't they? But you get through the airport bit reasonably quick and it's part of the video that gets you there. And then you're there and like it's about the... Well, this isn't a good example either. This is a video of an airport. <laughs> Forget it. I go, um, left everything last minute. Well, what I was thinking was, if I was doing this travel vlog about going to Chicago, what I probably would have done is done a little bit of, probably none at my house. <laughs> probably a little bit of like the airport. You've seen an airport, you know what the inside of an airport looks like, it's boring. And most of it is, we're in Chicago! <laughs> no. Anyway. I always do when I go away on trips and holidays and stuff like that. I got my money yesterday i got my phone adapter for the usa yesterday i got my roaming pass for my phone yesterday i got my health insurance yesterday which was extortionate but um got to fill in a little bit on the page saying that i got a bulletproof vest and it went down quite a lot which is which is a, a bonus every cloud um yeah let's go just arriving now just making sure i'm not getting run over arriving now at terminal one of three from manny airport good little uh, tip for you when you're traveling to the airport if you're getting a taxi just don't get a taxi right into the airport yeah i'm getting run over oi oi you get the taxi just outside of it because you'll save about 10 15 quid so i've just got it just outside the airport and it costs x amount if i'd have got another 100 yards it would have been like double the price. It's just how do you know that? <laughs> getting into the airport, like they do you, don't they? You need to get to. I don't taxi people have like a pass so they can get in and out of the airport? Ireland, Ireland first stop. A uh, little cheeky layover in Ireland, and then uh, I think a pint of Guinness has got my name on it, don't you? Keep your bottle. Don't don't spend a five on a bottle of water when you go through security. Take an empty bottle. Let's go. Security A. Boom. He's full of these life hacks, isn't he? Proper time to put the phone now. How are you going to fill the bottle? Oh, well, otherwise I can't. Just out the toilet and that night. Check in. Oh, straight through. Scanned it. Passed it. Walked straight through. Easy peasy, this travelling game. Oh, security. Yeah, it's easy until you have to go in the next country and they check your passport. It's easy getting out of the country, isn't it? Oh, it's not about security, is it? See you on the other side of security. Join the refill revolution. Well, there, no, there are refills. There are refills. So it's not a hack. They just advertised it to him and he just promoted it. It's funny, isn't it? Like, you give yourself loads of time to get to the airport. You know, always thinking what could go wrong. And then I was in and I was through security straight through in about, like, 10 minutes. Now I've got loads of time to kill. All there really is to do is sit down and have a beer. But... I'm going to refrain on this occasion because I'll be in Ireland in about two hours. So I might as well wait for the old... Uh, so I might as well wait for the Guinness instead, for the good stuff. Never been to... I'm half Irish. I've never been to Ireland. Um, my dad's... I told you I had Irish connections, didn't you, with that name? Irish. So... There's the, there's the connection. Then his dad's Irish. Is he no Eamon Holmes? Is he a friend of uh, Jim McDonald? What's going on? Time for my first proper pint of Guinness. Your first proper pint of Guinness in an airport on a layover on the way to Chicago. Uh, 
nine o'clock in the morning, which to me is the absolute perfect time. More people need a bit of that in their lives. About to get on board the first plane. Saw a book there with a cool title. Look, put that on the vlog. Uh, Lingard. Got all them queuing there. I chose the very... Now, I know that Luke's not a very sophisticated media producer. I know that you don't have to be on YouTube and it's fair enough and everything, but he does put himself out there as if he's... Um, like, literally, a media producer. And I know it's hard to... Um, I know it's hard to put him up against, like, you know, the sort of YouTube... Um, what's the word? Uh, meta. But Casey Neistat, I mean, he's been doing this for years, Casey Neistat. Millions of views, obviously. Uh, but these are Casey Neistat's travel vlogs. Um, should we just pick a random one? And that's it. Exactly 48 hours later, I'm back exactly where I started. <laughs> and thus begins a 48 hour trip to Germany and back. Notice, it's a bit shaky cam, you know, it's a nice camera, but it's a bit shaky cam, you know, that was a real zoom in shot and he got the effect he wanted. He's making a film though, isn't he? There's music, there's editing, there's door. Still not there. Maybe I do need you for my next movie. You want to know my phone number or what? what? Okay, so that's hour two because it took me two hours to get the airport. Literally, that was literally a two hour drive to the airport. Good morning, son. How are you? See how he handles the airport. What does that mean? Do I have to go home? Which way do I go? This one, this one. Thank you. Now, in terms of content, airport is a bit boring, isn't it? You've seen an airport, so like he's turning it into a little bit of a story. Follow the suitcase. Hey, no, you yeah. You go nice to meet you. Did I make it? Yeah, your passport, please. Thank you. So, basically, I mean, that's just getting into the start. You know what's going to carry on like that, isn't it? I'm doing. He's going to do some talking. He's going to do some travelling. Going to see some stuff. But my point is that it's all about this editing and, like, the sort of content creation aspect of it. Um, and that's, like, the meta six years ago. I know Luke's just doing a sort of look at my holidays video, but... <laughs> Just uh, from media production side of things, it looks very, very. Um, even for a YouTuber, so certainly especially for a YouTuber who's trying to make content and trying to like improve their channel and go somewhere and do stuff, it looks very like just sort of just filmed on the phone. No, you know, no editing whatsoever, doesn't it? No thoughts. Just this is what's happened. This is what's happened. This is what's happened. Clip them all together. Back row for. This kind of reason. It's much more cinema verite. As soon as the doors open again, bang! Off I go. Here we are. As you walk towards the plane, probably don't want to go as soon as the doors open, bang! Probably don't say that. Another hack from Luke is choose a seat on the back of the plane because the back of the plane also has a, a stairs. I'm, out, I'm one for this. I don't want to wait in the queue with all the people. I'm not just going to... I'm unhappy with it. I want to see if there's a little sneaky... Like, if, oh, they're not using the back entrance. Why? Because they're just sheep and they're all lined up there. Well, then I'll use the back entrance. Fine. Like, I'm, I'm happy with that. Like, when the plane touches down and they're like, stay in your seats and da-da-da-da, I'm like up with my bag right at the front. <laughs> I'm like, you can't fucking... Tell me to sit down if you want, but I'm here at the front now. I'm getting off first. Leave me alone. I've got my bag. I'm prepared. I'm not, like, messing around, like, shuffling past everyone. I hate it. And when we get off the plane, I want to go... Fast, fast out. I don't want to dawdle and drag my bag and talk to people. And if you can see in the magazine, I'll, I'll run past you on the way to the, the checkout. I'm out into that thing because I want to give them my passport, get out and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> I've got the cigarette in my hand. I want that cigarette. Got all them queuing there. I chose the very back row for this kind of reason. Luke's smarter than the average bear. 
soon as the door's open again, bang! As soon as the door's open, bang! <laughs> what did you say, mate? Get him off the plane. <laughs> He's got a bomb. <laughs> As soon as the door's open again, bang! <laughs> it's just like the worst thing to be saying while you're walking around slightly on your own away from the crowd <laughs> towards the plane. Off I go. Off Here we I go. Are. First stop, Sunny Island. Guinness time. Big, Guinness time. Big airport. A lot of gates, a lot of flights. It's inside the airport. Where's my flight? USA, USA. Let's get me in the gate. Get me in the lounge. I'm excited, I'm going to America. Proper Guinness. This. Get it in focus. Thank you. You didn't even get it in focus, you fucking burg. There, it's in focus then. Um, the, uh, the Guinness being made here. I, I suppose it is does count, doesn't it, as Irish Guinness. Good old Irish Guinness at the airport lounge through the check-in on the way to America. First taste of a real Irish Guinness. I need to know in chat, you need to tell me, <laughs> is this the cream de la Irish Guinness? Is it very different at the airport lounge to Dublin city centre? Do you maybe want to go to like one of the more traditional, like, you know, Dublin jaunts to, to get a more traditional Guinness? Is or, or is the one at the airport equally as good as every other Guinness you get in Ireland? I need to know. <laughs> Red fan, you were saying the same, the same. So same, same, exactly this, exactly the same. I thought that, like you know, the the ones. Uh, I thought this might be a bit more like you know, like Heineken and Guinness, you know, served at the bar through the the the, the modern pipes or something. I thought that the old, you know, the old pump barrel at the traditional porterhouse might have a, a different flavour or a different feel to it. It doesn't taste like tarmac. I like Guinness. Guinness is one, well, I don't drink it anymore, but it's one of my favourites. Or it used to be. It's like drinking a cloud in a glass. At least you don't feel like you need your dinner as much. <laughs> he was 20 minutes, yeah, but he couldn't get out of the airport. Off of Guinness. Thank you. There we go. There we go. Don't move it. It's Sorry. not settled. Here we go. Just sat down next to some random geezer just chatting because the random. Irish love a, love a good chat. First pint of Irish Guinness. Now, when we saw the drinks being pulled, there were two there and there were two pints of Heineken. I'm assuming that's somebody else's drinks and that this is his drink as a solo traveller. And he did sit down next to a random person and talk to a randomer. At the moment, no indication of anyone else being with him, but... There we go. There we go. Let's have it. Here we go, just sat down next to some random geezer, just chatting, because the Irish love a, love a good chat. First pint of Irish Guinness. Nearly spilt it. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh, yummy. Oh, you know what? Does hit different. Does hit different in Dublin. Apparently it is better in Dublin. I don't know, I can't remember, but I did drink Guinness in Dublin, you know, but I can't remember if it was better. I think it probably was than some of the shite I get in some of the pubs around here, but. Oh my days. I'm gonna have to get another one of them. So that's the two pints of Guinness all done. Would you please get yourself in focus? Absolutely beautiful, I mean it. Oh, it totally. goes back in. Um, I'm wondering if this is on his phone or if he's got himself a camera for this, but it feels like it should stay in focus better if it's his phone, but. It's different in Ireland. Um, first time on. I should be able to see in the reflection, shouldn't I, of his glasses? Um, first time in these stomping grounds, unbelievable, considering that's where my family's from. Now, first time on my stomping grounds. You're not on your stomping grounds, you haven't left the airport. Uh, I'm at the gate, might have just said that. Maybe not, I don't know. Um, I'm at the gate, and I've heard a bit of a hack, right, where if you wait till everybody has gotten on the plane. Airplane hack, airplane hack. You ready for your airplane hack? We're gonna go for our airplane hack now. Okay, why am I going Scouse? Hang on. Hey, up our kid, we're going airplane. Airplane hack. Manchester. I can't do it anymore. Oh, it's happened. If, you, if you're the last one on. Last one on? No, I've already got a seat assigned to me. So it's not going anywhere. But if I'm the last person on the plane... Which Make I sure I'm going to be the last person on that plane. That, that would annoy me as well. Somebody making sure they're the last person. I'm like, get on the plane. Let's get me on the plane. No fucking about. 
please, would you just get on the plane and stop fucking about? <laughs> please put your bag in that thing and stop fucking about. Get on the plane. I, I do think I want to put my bag in the hand luggage later and the stowaway later because then it's easier to get away first, get it out first. But um, yeah, I don't like to be f watching people fuck about and I don't like to be fucked about especially with planes, it annoys me that you have, like, out of 300 people who get on, there's going to be about 20 who are just like, oh, I dropped my polos. I'm like, fuck, get on the plane, you fucking dick. We all just want to get out and go away. <laughs> the sooner it's in the air, the quicker we can get out of this mess. I will make sure I am. Put that in, yeah, put that in room 101. People who fuck about on planes. <laughs> um, so there might be two seats here. You might get Three a two-seater. Sir, you know, um... Just, a, just even just a better one seat, even a row three, dare I say it. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna test the theory out on the. It's not an awful theory, is it? You walk on the plane last, so you've got your seat allocated to you. That's there, that's safe, that's banked. But if there is a row of three that has not been allocated, you will see it, and no one else will have it, and they're all already on the plane. So I'm getting on last. Also, though, someone might see it before you because you're the last one on the plane. So. <laughs> I don't know. Boarding a plane hack. Poor man's first class. Bring it on. Chicago, here we come. As things stand. Got three seats to the left of me. It's fucking working. It's working our kid. No one wants to sit by me. Fucking brilliant. Um, I, I wonder as well, when I went to America, we flew from England to Chicago. Like, just England. Like, he's jumped from England to Ireland to Chicago. Is that normal? Or is it the Aer Lingus flight is cheap, and that's cheap to get an Aer Lingus flight, so it's cheap to get to Ireland, so he's, like, double the planes, but it's cheaper. Is that what's happened there? Gotta get a full row. Three seats to the left of me. Gotta get a full row. Do I get a full what? row? I need the full row. As long as I get... Here she comes. Extra. Oh! You nearly got busted then. That. As long as I get an extra, I'll take that. Are you looking thinking about it? Tense moments. Tense moments. Two seats all for me. Two seats for you. Two seats all for me. Way. Except what, what you mean is someone sat in that seat. So you've got this seat, you're claiming it, even though there's someone sat in that seat that equally could say, well, this seat's also like shared for me then. What do you mean two seats for you? What are you going to do in the other seat? <laughs> There's oh, there's somebody else there. There's somebody else. So you're going to keep one seat distance between you and that person. This is a massive win. I mean, it is a bit of a win, a small win. Now, this. Have you ever seen anyone do this in your life? Look at that. Planning and preparation. First the wine. Then the water and the coke to wake up again whilst watching Ghostbusters Ghostbusters <laughs> yes same same Ghostbusters is my favourite film so what happens if you want to get up at any point you can't stow your tray because you've got two glasses of water on it you could put them on the other pla on the other seat oh that's the spare seat that's what the spare seat's for like, you could put the bottles of wine and the coke away, you know, you don't have to be on the tray in front of you. But it's not normal to sit on a plane and immediately load your tray. <laughs> I don't know how long we're into the flight here, do you know what I mean? But it feels like earlier in the flight, what he's decided to do is plan it all out. I'll get me two cups of water, I need them. <laughs> Got it all sorted here. Air Lingus, very good airline. Chili beef. Chili beef. Whoa, that's me dinner. I'm having my dinner now on the plane. Have you had this? What have you chosen for your dinner off the plane? Have you had the chili beef as well? Same. I chose chili beef. Same. Oh, that's good. That's how it goes, isn't it? That's how the old plane goes all the way over. And you saw a fly over Canada. I found that really weird when, because uh, we flew the same arc, because it's where the way the curve of the world is. But I was thinking, like, why don't we fly this way down this way to New York? go across there but you sort of fly over Canada like down the coast like that oh no the car's gonna fall off the honey the car's gonna fall honey I shrunk the kids look the car's gonna fall off the oh no 
I don't know. I don't know what the movie is. It's filmed a bit of the movie in the, on the plane. That's Beetlejuice. That is. It's not even fucking Ghostbusters. Can I? Do you mind if I film out the window for a little bit? I'm doing a vlog for me internet. I'm on YouTube. I'm doing a vlog. Can I film out of your window for a bit? You must be so fucking bored. About one hour to go now. Only an eight-hour flight, but only an eight-hour flight, but feels like fucking forever because I didn't bring any entertainment whatsoever. I brought my iPod and that, but I don't think I like books much. Usually on a flight, you'd think you could get through like a whole book and then with a film and maybe a bit of a sleep. And then sometimes I like my Nintendo Switch and then that's that. But I didn't bring anything. I just brought me music. I've been asleep for a bit, but it's fucking like taking ages. I thought once I'd watch Ghostbusters and had a bit of a sleep, then we'd be there. But we're not there. Eight hours is a long time. It feels like a lot longer. I'll tell you what, the feed you well on Air Lingus. Definitely be flying with ease again. I'll definitely be flying with ease again. The food was fucking magic, though. Time to go back six hours. I don't know if I'm tired or hungover or... I don't know if I'm tired or if I'm hungover. Combination of the two. Combination of the two, really. I've had a shit. <laughs> I've been for a shit in that. But, <laughs> but nothing came out. <laughs> Must be because I'm so high up. I'm starting to feel really gay. <laughs> Big ups, Jess. I'm missing a trick there. What am I missing? They've just turned on CERN. What? Stick with your dig. You think we're all going to die? If we, you know, if it all goes wrong and they turn on CERN and we get sucked off into a black hole, at least I get sucked off before I die. <laughs> the voices. What, what voices? Am I doing my voices wrong? Tired or hungover or combination of the two. Who's sucking? No one's getting sucked off. You get sucked off in the black hole and that's how you die. <laughs> the black hole is so strong, when it sucks you off, you die. <laughs> you get sucked off into the black hole. My, my granddad win the war. He said he was flying over the Bermuda Triangle and he got sucked off into the Bermuda Triangle. I'm really high up now and I'm starting to think that maybe this was the gayest thing I could have done. <laughs> I'm really liking the purple on the on the roof. It's really nice. I'm really enjoying being high up. Yeah, not long now till landing. Not long now till landing. Air lingers up. Air lingers all the way. Air lingers all the way. Hey, I'm making myself a YouTube vlog. Maybe if, if you are nice to me on the plane and bring me an extra one of those dinners, I can put Air Lingus on my YouTube and you might get more business. I started to do my accent wrong. You've got a wind warning, so it's begun. What? Look, what? <laughs> you're scaring me now. CERN's been on for years. Is CERN activating the world's most powerful particle accelerator? <laughs> do not consent for the April 8th eclipse. No. CERN restarted its Large Hadron Collider after a regular winter stop for maintenance. It's unrelated to the eclipse. It's been on before. People are worried that something bad's going to happen. Um, Luke's gone out there in... Um, like, we can't see the eclipse from where we are, but Luke's gone out there to America where you can fully see it. Maybe he's gone to a ceremony. You know, one of those ceremonies. One of those mason ceremonies. Maybe he's a Satanist. Do they have the fucking Satanist sex club in New of, of Chicago? Do they have one of them? The Nicole Kessinger sex club in Chicago? Maybe Nicole Kessinger's moved to Chicago and Luke's gone there to be her friend. We'll see anyway. <laughs> if it all goes wrong, I'm eating that cake. What's wrong with your Alexa? Alexa, 
It's the Large Hadron Collider going to kill us all. Sorry, I don't have an answer for that. Oh, no. It's all right, if I clipses before, um, clipses. <laughs> Why am I 10? It's because I'm doing his voice. And we've had a clips before. You know, I thought we were going to have an eclipse, but it turned out to be a clip. So I had an orange one and my friend had a lemon one, but I had an orange one as well. Same. I thought it was going to be an eclipse, but it turned out to be a calypso. <laughs> I had a Solero. <laughs> Same. Proper airline. Touchdown. Proper airline. Proper. With the planes and everything. They don't fuck about on this airline. They get you on the plane and they actually fly you over the fucking sea and that. Proper airline. I've been on some before. They weren't proper airlines, really. It was just a bus. We made it. I hope no one does a round of applause. And you're not dead from the heights. That'll go on room 101. We've made it to the US of A. Hung over. We have some things in common because I also don't like the round of applause when they land the plane because, of course, it's done automatically, isn't it? The whole flight. The people that fly the plane just do a bit of this. It's automatic and it? it's all computers, so. Tired. We're ready to rock and roll. Instant popcorn. Like, Chicago, soon, instant popcorn. Soon as you get off the plane, like. Got off the plane, it's just like, just some popcorn. Wow. This is America. It's well different to England. Like, as soon as you got off the plane, there was popcorn. It's the first thing I noticed. Oh, this it's a little bit annoying, because I actually have been to this exact airport and done filming in it as well. I've been to that exact airport. Actually, I don't know if we did any filming because we just did the stop over, didn't we? we? Just did the bounce over, but I've been to that. Home Alone, isn't it? Oh my god! It's it's the same airport from Home Alone. Popcorn. Ah, oh, this is the airport from Home Alone, isn't it? This is the airport. They have all these planes, like these old planes and shit, hung up in the the sky in the ceiling. Like they've got like a story that goes on with all this old air aeronautic stuff that hangs up. Um. Oh no way! Check this out. So that's the airport. That's where they ran down in Home Alone. It's just like in the in the films. Right down there. It was all like one big straight line, wasn't it? Wasn't it? And they just ran down there. Meow. Where's Kevin? Um. Don't really know how we got out of this gaff though, because. It must be incredibly easy to get out of the airport. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think you find the sign for the exit and you just follow that bastard. <laughs> I just don't think it's hard to get out of the airport at all. Like, straight away, there's just loads of, like, food and places to get a drink and stuff. There's no, where's passport control? <laughs> Is that how it works here? It's just like, get off the plane, have a drink, have a burger, and then, get, then go passport control. Check this out. That's a good fucking start, isn't it? No guns and that. Isn't that a given? <laughs> this airport is hench. So, so this is the car park for the airport. Trying to figure out how to get out of this absolute... And I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> gigantic airport, right? I'm stuck in this gigantic airport. You like his accent. Listen, Luke is another figure of ridicule for me. But there is a possibility that through his connection with Eamon Holmes and persistence, he might end up on the telly. And people might like his cloak good accent. He might even get to present the one show. Like, you know, stranger things have happened. That can't be right. Get me on the one show, sat next to Test Daily or whomever. Get rid of him. <laughs> and it is massive. It's massive. Like, unbelievably massive. Like, like it's really big. I've never seen out like this. So I was told to go and get the blue. To be honest, I didn't get that feeling when I was in the Chicago airport. I just felt like I was in an airport. Like the car park was a car park. We went to a hotel. We got back on a plane the next day. We flew on to Columbus. Like we had to stay over because there was a, a delay or something, I think. I don't think it was intended, but, you know, we had to jump and stay over. So I uh, jumped in a travel lodge for a night. It, it just it didn't seem like I was overwhelmed by the size of the airport, having been in some airports. <laughs> Blue line, yeah. Blue line train. 
And then this guy likes to get the blue line. I've got to get the blue line, but I don't know where the fucking blue line is, do I? So how am I going to get the blue line? It's impossible. It's almost like I'm in a foreign country. I don't speak the fucking language. I'm just going to... I'm going to have trouble here. So I'm in foreign... I'm, I'm from England, aren't I? So I can't... How am I going to get the train? I've never seen out like this. So I was told to go and get the blue line. Yeah. Blue line train. And then this guy, like, this pretty sound guy who's like... He's like... Crossing people over the road. He's like an adult lollipop man or something. And he just come up to me then and he was like, if you get the blue line, he went, sit near the front, near the conductor. And it's pretty sketchy. I was like, why have you got guns in that? And he was like, yeah, some of them. Fucking hell. So I chose the Uber option. I'm scared of the train, so I've got on the Uber. The man said they had guns on the train, so I've gone on an Uber. Deadly round here, apparently. Look at it, beautiful, isn't it? So that was where they played baseball. This is not what I was expecting at all. No, I would expect City Break, Chicago. Like you don't want to be in the thick of it, maybe, but you City, aren't you? Like, not in the city, not the suburbs. But this is not what I was expecting. Taking you right to the door. Finally made it. So if you wanted to know exactly where I'm staying, <laughs> you just have to find these buildings in Chicago on the Google Maps, and then that's where I'm staying. <laughs> Christ, what a journey. What a journey. Pretty nice houses around here, though. They're nice, aren't they? Very distinctive as well, so if you found them on the Google Maps, you'd know exactly where I was staying. So, yeah. I've arrived. I've arrived. Peace out. Interesting to me on that one is that no one picked him up Figure from the airport. Out. Like, if he's staying with someone that's a friend, you know, if he's, like, meeting up with some people and they're, like, inviting him, why did no one meet him from the airport? Maybe they're busy? You know, that's possible, isn't it? But... Why did no one meet him from the airport? And then the next question is... Where's what's he doing staying here? <laughs> I don't understand this at all. Like, it's a big house, so he's not going to be staying in the whole house, he's not going to have rented the whole property. So, what the hell's going on? Like, not this exact house, but you know, one of these houses. They're big, either shared accommodation or family homes. Like, I don't know, you tell me what you think. I know, yeah, we'll find out in the next episode. Yeah, rented an Airbnb, he says. But what kind of... I mean, we'll look on Airbnb in a minute if you want, but like, on Airbnb, when I rent them, I get the whole house. That's my house. Like, you know, it, it's for me. And like, I don't expect that he's going to have shelled out for one of those on his own. So what's going on? No, it's a really... Like, when you think about it, Luke hasn't got loads of money coming out of his ears, I would assume. His, his Peter Folding, his Mr. Folding video did quite well, didn't it? But like his YouTube career is not like pumping at the moment. He's got a few members. He's took two weeks off. He has gone probably to do two weeks worth of work so he can then afford to do whatever he wants with money that you get from work. You know, there is that. You know, going and working hard graft two weeks as a chef somewhere gives you the money to do whatever you want. Fair enough. He's got a kid to do the child maintenance and all that as well, hasn't he? So, um, I just think like a, a big expensive America trip. This one doesn't have to be big and expensive though. It could have been cheap flights, little Airbnb, you know, like chunk the thing together, get it done cheap. But what motivates him to do that, to go to Chicago? Like what I'm saying is if you want a cheap holiday and you're Luke, then isn't it much, much easier just to go to Tenerife for a week or like, I don't know, like anywhere in Europe, like anywhere in Europe. Like what is the fascination with Chicago? Why Chicago? 
what is there about it that makes it the destination of the draw for him? He said there's nothing about it that makes it a destination of the draw. Am I to assume that it's simply that he found a cheap flight on the internet, a good deal? Like it's, I can't still get it into my head as to why this has been his choice. And then when you get there, like I say, like, it's not like, like, okay, let's say I'm going to New York. What I'm looking for in New York is somewhere in the New York city centre somewhere, I guess, isn't it? Like, you know, somewhere nice, like a little flat that I can go and rent for a week and like a little holiday let like that. Like, I would probably not be going out to some like suburban outskirts. It's like reasonably large family homes. I'm saying family homes because that's what I assume these are. I'm being like, yeah, let's stay for a week here. This sounds like perfect for me. Oh, it's just a very strange sort of strange setup. If you if you met someone online, why aren't they there to pick him up? Why is he getting an Uber or getting the blue train? Why did he have to ask the people at the airport what to do? I've just asked the lollipop man. He said, "Get the blue train." He would have been given instructions. When you leave the airport, get a taxi to this destination, or we'll come and pick you up. Like he's he's travelling on his own, and he's got no one meeting him or helping him organise when he gets there. So it feels like he's just on his own. So that's fine. That's fair enough. Like it just the combination of that and Chicago and stopping in the outskirts. I mean, he's got a funny way of thinking about things. Luke does, doesn't he? he doesn't do things like we do. So, I, I, maybe it's just that. But I can't get my head around it. I really can't. Like I said, I've been to Columbus, Ohio. It's a very similar sort of vibe. Flying all the way from England to America. We actually landed in Chicago and we did a stopover. Um, and the whole thing in, that we were doing... What are you doing? Let me put... Come here. Oh, this me You just want a cuddle. Well, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a cuddle. Um, we were filming the Arnold Schwarzenegger Sports Festival. We were following Eddie in the Eddie Hall documentary. And it had taken us to the Arnold Schwarzenegger um, Arnold's Fitness Expo. So Arnold Schwarzenegger was there and that was good because we got some film with him and like, we filmed Eddie in the competition and like then the other days that we were there, it wasn't like just holidays. What we did was Eddie went and got his hair cut. There was a guy that came with us called Julian who had a, a brother that lived in the area. So uh, he took us around a couple of places. There was a, an arcade where they had the old cool Street Fighter machine and Eddie played a Zangief. Um, and we went to this like famous burger restaurant place and like, you know, it was like little locations. Like when Luke was saying he's gonna do some location shooting, um, maybe, you know, he's doing that for a, a project or something like that he's not telling us. Cause like, what we did essentially was we filled our time with going to cool interesting places and filming Eddie in them for the film yeah like that's what we were doing I think we had one day off where we didn't do that and we just went for some food or some shit but like essentially Eddie was competing at the event we were gathering content you know it's like we had a plan uh, but otherwise I, f I remember thinking to myself like you know this is Columbus Ohio this is uh, it's not like a glamour city and it like we are here for this purpose but like would I have ever chosen to come here in my life otherwise like, I remember thinking this you know would I, I would never have gone to Columbus Ohio had I not had a specific purpose for doing so because it just wouldn't have been on my list and even now having visited I, I'm not going to put it back on the list of like oh I need to get back there and walk up and down those very sort of um, homogenized streets <laughs> with lots of big buildings that I just don't go in like just all around and uh and a few restaurants that I did venture into. Like, you know, it doesn't, I can't think of something that, like Chicago is an interesting place. It's got the lakes, it's got some stuff. Like there are things like Chicago Bulls, yeah, you can find stuff to do. But in reality as well, it's a very, um, it's a northern, gritty, cold, uh, kind of run down in places. Like it's going through some difficulties with so social issues, gun crime, uh, like people who grow and develop as like artists in Chicago, like music artists, like they tend to sort of move on to New York and you know move away from Chicago, don't they? Like um, it doesn't retain its um, like it's, uh, there's a lot of places like this. You know, you grow up in it and you want to get out of it in a way. You know, it doesn't retain its talent like uh, in the same way as some of the more glamorous cities might draw people to it. Um, that, that's my feeling on it anyway. So. Um, 
did you look in the sky? Of course you looked, yeah. I looked directly at the sun for the last eclipse as well, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so they're my feelings on that. I think it's all very, very strange. I, I don't quite understand it. On the other hand, I, I could also argue in the case of you find a cheap flight on the internet like I was just doing, like Skyscanner. Like, this just offered me Miami, so I clicked Miami, didn't I? So, like... If it had offered me something different, like here's Orlando, it's offering me Orlando for £150. So maybe I go to Orlando for £150 because it's £150. Fuck it. You know, that's cheap as going to, to Tenerife. So maybe I just do that. And I don't know anything about Orlando, but it sounds like a, an adventure, so I'll do it. Fuck it, you know? And he could have done that. Like, he literally could have done that. But otherwise, I can't understand. There's Chicago, £180. So it's on the list, you know, you can get a cheap flight there, theoretically. Um, I just don't understand why, uh, other than that, other than a sort of pin in the map random event, uh, what triggered the Chicago thing? And it makes me wonder whether, the, honestly as well, like, what about this? What about this? I have to change the live today because I didn't know about the solar eclipse until just now. This rare eclipse goes right over Illinois and a handful of other states and it will be midday on a perfectly clear blue sky day when 94% of the sun will be covered. It should be quite the sight, he spelled sight wrong. I will station myself along Lake Michigan in Chicago. I'm going to get the best footage possible for you guys. Maybe a time lapse, I'm not sure yet. I may go live, but it's a slow burner, so I'll see what's happening. It's pure coincidence that I'm in Chicago for this. He, like, he states, it's pure coincidence that I'm in Chicago for this. He states that like he, he didn't plan it. Right? But all it makes me think, I'll tell you what that makes me think, is that Eamon Holmes and his shady Illuminati gang, the Masons or whatever, they're doing a party in Illinois for the eclipse and it's he's gone for that he's gone to the illinois eclipse party for the masons that's what i think yeah it's like it might be an induction for him or some shit a big thing for the satanists really because he put it's pure if, if it i don't care that it's pure coincidence if it's not pure coincidence you might just write that you know why would you ever write it's pure coincidence just get this straight i'm not deliberately here doing this it's just a coincidence okay god got away with that one <laughs> but i still don't understand why he would even you know post all this shit if he's doing all the mason stuff so it's just a bit of a bit of fun bit of fun isn't it but we're not done yet look because he's got one more vlog for us that looks like, like Sidney Prescott's I hope, house. I hope he does loads of vlogs. I hope he does loads of vlogs. This is what he's got up to day two then, I suppose. He doesn't say it's day two or whatever, but this is, you know, this is the next day, I suppose. I don't know. That looks like Sidney Prescott's house. It looks like Sidney Prescott's house. I don't know who that is. Is it John Prescott's daughter? Hello, Sydney. Right, if it's pitch black on this road and you're locked out and you hear that going off, Jesus Christ. If it's pitch black on this road and you're locked out and you hear that going off, what the fuck is that? What are they doing in America? It must be some Red Indian thing. It's like pipes that jingle jangle in the wind. I don't like that. <laughs> it's wind chimes. And you're locked out and you hear that going off. Jesus Christ. Oh, you won't see them on the Illinois stream. Illinois have probably... This is what I'm saying. Is What's that Bohemia Grove? He's got the owl. Where's that? It's in Monte Rio, California, founded in 87. It belongs to a private gentleman's club known as the Bohemian Club. Each year, the Bohemian Grove hosts more than a two week encampment of the most prominent men in the world. This is on Wikipedia. You know, the Bohemian Grove where they're all doing the booming. <laughs> To ignore the kids. <laughs> like um, Ryan Garcia said. You know what I'm talking about, yeah? Shouts out if you're in chat now, quick. Shouts out in chat. Do you know what I'm talking about, Bohemian Grove? Yeah? Yes or no in chat for me, quick. Yeah, right? Okay, now check this out then. Google 
Chicago, Bohemian Grove. Because you know it's not in Chicago, don't you? It's not in Chicago. Oh, what's this? Bohemian Club. The Bohemian Club is a club founded in 1899 that was frequented by Chicago's Czech elite, as well as the visiting elite from Czechoslovakia. The club was used as a place to share Czech cultural drama and music and literature. It was visited by numerous people of Bohemian descent. It's active in the west suburbs of Chicago to this day. They've got a Bohemian Club, though. Not the Bohemian Club from Bohemian Grove. No. The Bohemian Club is a private club with two locations. One of them's in California, and the other one's in Sonoma County. They're different Bohemian clubs. They're not the same club. This one's the Bohemian club that does all the stuff with the owl. And the other one's the Bohemian club that's from Chicago. And it's just music and that from the Czech... Because Czech's Bohemia. So don't get confused. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, maybe he's gone out there to do some sort of... Um... Why is the feature of this video as well? Horror movies and people getting stabbed up. This is something I don't understand. That looks like Sydney Prescott's house. Hello, Sydney. Right, if it's pitch black on this road and you're locked out and you hear that going off, Jesus Christ. Do you think Luke's going to do a murder? You can just imagine Ghostface just jumping out now and slashing me up. <laughs> Look at that one there. You're telling me some sketchy shit's not gone on in there. It's like the it just looks like a nice house. I don't know what you're on about. Amityville Horror. Right, there's a few things that I've noticed while I've been here. Right. Looks like the Amityville Horror. Do you imagine if someone walking past your house going, there's some sketchy shit going on in there. It looks like a fucking horror movie. Thanks, mate. Look at that one there. Telling me some sketchy shit's not gone on in there. It's like the Amityville Horror. Right, there's a few things that I've noticed while I've been here. Right. On the pla on the plane home, I've got to get on last because I need three seats to myself because I'm not going to be able to sit down for the fucking eight hours, I tell you. That are different, very different to the UK. So This is what's different that I found in America, my book report. I've been told that... Um, every kind of... And the reason he won't be able to sit down is because he's hyperactive, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. Third round that you get, or every third drink, I don't know if this is everywhere, but in certain places, it's on the house, which is very clever kind of marketing that, because, you know, you get your, you get that third one on them, and it makes you want to stay longer. Because it's a free beer, isn't it? So I'm going to stay longer. They gave me a th third, every third drink is on the house. Is this true? Is this, has anyone been to America that can tell me this? Because I didn't drink a load of beer in America, so I, I, I don't know. But is every third drink on the house? Is that a standard thing? Or are people plying Luke with drink while he's in a bar on his own? Because you know, you've, you've just been topped up. Me going on Super Truffer, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Me and Super Truffer, we aren't friends. I've had to block him from my fucking live. I, uh, I, I could I get him on battery exhaust, I'd ask him, but I don't think he'd do it. And you feel welcomed, so it's it's quite it's very subtle, clever, but it's like the nicest form of manipulation. It's like they were re really nicely trying to manipulate me. It's like I'm being groomed, but in a really nice way by Americans in the bar. So I've had a really good night last night because I got really drunk. I think every third drink was on the house, so I paid for like four, and I had another two that I didn't pay for. So. From what I can remember, they were being really nice to me. Um, also, as well, in this, because uh, there's, there's just a local place at the bottom of the road where if I'm not out and about in Chicago, I'll go and have a quick uh, party guinea. Talking about it like he's lived there all his life. <laughs> you know, if I'm not out and about in Chicago, there's this local place that I like to go and have a quick pint of Guinness. Like, you've been there for like one day. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> You know, if I'm not out and about, there's this local place I like to go to. They all know me in there. Johnny, three pints. The third pint's three. The third the third pint's free. Johnny, three pints. The third pint's free. That's what they call me. They like me because of my accent. They say, oh, that's where are you from? 
And I'm like, I'm from Manchester. And they say, what, Manchester in America? And I say, no, Manchester in Manchester. It's from England, you know, <laughs> where you're from originally. Unless you're a Red Indian in that. It's <laughs> in there. And in this, because uh, there's, there's just a local place at the bottom of the road where if I'm not out and about in Chicago, I'll go and have a quick uh, pint of Guinness in there. And um, the guy that owns it, he comes over after I've had a pint and he's like, you want a shot of paddies? So he'll get like three or four different kind of customers that are in there and he'll line up a few shots and he'll pour, pour everyone a whiskey, but get everyone together to have it. So then he's getting people like talking and socialising with each other. Which, and then you start having chats. Um, and then naturally you probably are gonna hang about for longer. So very good um, management of a pub. Very good management of a pub. Very good management. He gave me three free drinks and he dragged me over to the bar and he got me talking to this really big guy called George who's got a truck. And there was this other guy called Bob and Bob said that he had the spirit of God come through him and that Bob lived Bob said that the God came inside him like a body the same size. I didn't really know what Bob was going on about, but he made me touch his skin and his skin felt electric. I had a really good night really in the end. Chicago's great. I'm going back again tomorrow. <laughs> Paddy's what? I don't know. <laughs> Paddy's I just <laughs> Luke's in the pub on his own. The guy's got him over to the bar. Give him a put. Like, it sounds like Luke was crying into his Guinness. Hey, hey, mate. Hey, geezer. Hey, geezer. Hey there, geezer. You're right. What, what you, what you, what you want? What you want? Hey there, geezer. I just wondered if you wanted to have a free pint of pad, pint of pad, How does the American talk? Hey there, geezer. I'm just saying. Do you want to come over to the bar over here and get yourself a little free pint? Free not pint. What is that? glass of whiskey I, I i don't know i'm over here drinking my guinness having a little crying to me phone yeah well that's why i thought you might want to come over to the bar and talk to us over here you don't have to cry on your own you can get over here and you can have a talk to us are you sure i can come over there and talk to you you're americans and that <laughs> i haven't really got anything to say in the ad lib here i'm just trying to set up the sort of premise that I'm talking on my own and crying into my phone. And I'm, I'm sort of inviting you over for a little drinky of drinky. <laughs> Why don't you come and sit your little cute butt over here. And then we'll see what kind of drinky we can pour you to cheer you up. How about that? Oh, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm not sure I should. My mom said not to talk to too many strangers when I was in when I was in America because you don't know what people are like well you know what I'm like because I'm offering you a free drink and I work here in this her bar so you know what I'm like I'm no stranger I'm your friend well I suppose really you are my friend aren't you because we've met earlier and you've given me a free drink and free people wouldn't be giving me free drinks if they weren't your friend okay I'll come over and sit by you you can come over and sit by me here and you can sit by Big George and Bob Bob's got a truck <laughs> So I've noticed that if I if I opened a pub in the UK, if I I'd open, definitely adopt that kind of style. If I opened a pub in the UK, I'd definitely be giving out free whiskey and making everyone talk to each other at the bar because it'd make the pub much better. And I'd call it Luke's American Style Pub, and it'd be brilliant. Uh, I think it's brilliant. So brilliant! <laughs> it's literally the guy from. It's literally this now. We are literally doing this now. We're literally, literally doing this now. Get to America. Otherwise, I'd have had to swim all the way there and then my clothes would have got really wet. Uh, another thing that I've noticed is that we are... We are much more... I don't want to... I don't want to... He's been there a day. He's been there a day. He's met four people at a pub. Let's find out what the difference is between Americans and English people. Uh, generalize a whole nation but we are much more straight talking and generally less two-faced um, <laughs> what they're being two-faced I thought they were being nice to me but when I got up and went to the toilet I went on my phone and when I came back I noticed that one of them had put a fucking all one of them <laughs> one of them put an aspirin in my drink and they were just messing with me 
I said, why have you put an aspirin in my drink? And they said, oh, don't worry. It's just a prank. And I said, we don't do pranks like that in England. We're much more straight talking. I don't like it. A lot of nicey, nicey, have a nice day. Have a nice day. Um, but they don't really want it? me to have a nice day, do they? They don't really care if I have a nice day or not. Hey, up, lad. You can have a nice day. I don't fucking care if you're having a nice day. Everywhere and... Um, I don't know how kind of legit that really is. Um, I think if people... Do you know what most people say when they go to America, that the customer service is really great and everyone's really friendly, don't they? And Luke's encountered that and said, yeah, I don't trust it. <laughs> They're being nice, like, he's giving me a free drink and that, but is he really my friend? <laughs> you really like the man who gave you the free drinks and the people at the pub... Who is it that's offended you by being nicey-nicey, smiley-smiley, and you don't really believe them? Who's doing this? Have a problem here. They'd rather kind of legit that really is. Um, I think if people have a problem here, they'd rather kind of talk behind your back than approach it. Which what happened at the pub? She's... Again, the way we would generally go about it. Who's talking behind your back at the pub? Another thing I've noticed as well is that... So Wait, who's talking behind his back with a problem that they wouldn't face with him head on? It's so far in... All he's done is had a few drinks at a pub that he intends to go back to when he's not around when i'm not out in chicago i'm going to be drinking down the local boozer this is my new local i'm going to call it me local i'm only here for three days but for these three days this is my local so it's my pub now it's my local and at my local there's these two fucking girls and they was talking about me behind my back and i don't know why and they won't fucking come and have it out with me and i don't like it anymore i'm not talking to them they're from america and america's well rubbish oh i'm staying in this like airbnb approach it which is, again, the way we would generally go about it. I think if people have a problem here, they'd rather kind of talk behind your back than approach it, which is, again, the way we would generally go about it. Another thing I've noticed as well is that... So, I'm staying in this, like, Airbnb. There we go. So we're staying in an Airbnb. We know the area and the style of houses. My host came in the other day. And My host came in the other day. What? Sorry, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you're, you're, you're fucking nut. I've never, ever met anyone that... Like, I've been to a few Airbnbs, yeah? I've never met anyone that owned them, <laughs> the hosts. Never face to face, never once. I got the key out the, the key for safe. I go in, it's my house for the bit. I leave, they tidy it up when I'm gone. <laughs> like, I've never met the hosts. <laughs> what do you mean the host came in? Came in where? The bedroom, the bathroom, the lounge. <laughs> what room were you in where the host came in? <laughs> what do you mean the host came in? Came in where? If I'm in my fucking room, in my Airbnb, no one's coming in. <laughs> what do you mean they came in? It's like Airbnb, and my host came in the other day, and uh, He said the other day, in, and it's like... And I said... Like, this is vlog number two, seven hours ago. How long has he been there? Like, I suppose he's since... I don't know what days, you know, he's not charged for days, but he said he left on Thursday, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know, this is Monday, isn't it now? Like, how many days has he been there? And the way he's talking about it, it's like he's been there for weeks. My host came in the other day. The other and, day? Uh, she walked in. The other day? Uh, What's the other day? Yesterday. <laughs> what do you mean? My host came in the other day, and uh, she walked in. And I she said, I went, I She walked in. She walked in. <laughs> this is gonna. Be, sorry, I know. I'll let him. I'll let him cook. I'll let him speak it, and then we'll rewind it and prick it apart. But I, I, there's so much to unpack. There's so much to unpack. So I'm staying in this like Airbnb, 
and my host came in the other day and uh, she walked in and I said, I went, hi, I went, hi, are you okay? As you do, it's, you, you know, you might say, you're right. It's just how we kind of greet people, isn't it? it you're not necessarily, you're not necessarily going, are you okay? Like, tell me your life story or, you know, tell me everything about your day. It's just a, it's just kind of a turn of phrase, isn't it? It's like, you're all right? It's like, yeah, are you? Like that. So I said, are you okay? I see more of these houses. So I said, um, are you okay? And she, she was like, yeah. Like, why? Like, like, why wouldn't I be? And I was like, I don't know, it's just, a, just how we speak kind of thing. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's a different thing. Um, I've had to kind of slow down and change how I speak a little bit. In chat, what do we think of this? Um, are you okay? And she, she was like, yeah. Like Why do I advertise my stream as a Genshin stream when we don't, we're not doing Genshin yet? Right, stream, uh, edit stream info. I'll quickly change it to talking rubbish. Talking rubbish, done. Um, come on then, chat, talk rubbish with me. Talks on this, please. I, why? Um, are you okay? And she, she was like, yeah. I, yeah. So I said, um, see more of these houses. So I said, um, <laughs> I okay? He's in it. It's like, you know, tell me everything about your day. It's just a, it's like, tell me, you're not just how we kind of greet people. You know? And I said, I went, I, okay. so I'm so, staying in this like Airbnb and my host came in the other day. And so my host came in the other day. So what were you doing? Where were you? What was happening? Your host came in. And uh, she walked in. She walked in. And I said, I, I went, said, Aye. Aye? I went, Hi, are you okay? You okay? As you do, it's, you, you know, you might say, You're all right. It's just how we kind of greet people, isn't it? it you're not necessarily, you're not necessarily going, Are you okay? Like, tell me your life story or, you know, tell me... Every We're not being two-faced like those Americans, are we? Everything <laughs> about your day, it's just... With that, you know, nice, how to, how are you, you know, being nice to people, but they don't really care. We're not being two-faced like the Americans. It's just kind of a turn of phrase, isn't it? It's like, yeah. just a turn of phrase, isn't it? It's all to speak. All right, it's like, yeah, are you? Like that. So I said, are you okay? I see more of these houses. So I said, um, are you okay? And she, she was like... Yeah. Yeah. So, regardless of what he's telling us he, he's been like, yeah. I've just said, are you all right? Are you all right? Are you all right? Are you all right? And she's been like, yeah. Like, it, I get the impression that the way he's spoken to her has made her give him the, yeah. Like, she's not got the right vibe off him, has she? Whoever she is, whatever this situation is, she said, Yeah. I, you know, it's it, it. He's saying she's got the wrong end of the stick from the way I'm talking. Fair enough, but she he stood there in the room and she's not happy with you. She's gone. Yeah, I'm okay. Like, why? Why are you asking? Like, there's a funny sort of, like, you know, you put yourself in her shoes. Her, t imagine her telling this story. The guy in the Airbnb said like he was asking me about if I was okay and stuff, and I, I didn't get a good vibe from him. You know, like the way she would describe it. It's just. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So you're having a good time at your Airbnb? Like, why? Like, like, why wouldn't I be? And I was like, why wouldn't I be? So, <laughs> does she think she's got a creep staying with her? Oh, no, it's just, a, just how we speak. Just how we speak? Or is this like a little cute thing that happened between people who, like, like each other, you know? But he doesn't seem happy about it, does he? So again, I'll throw in there, like, if he really is staying with someone who's a friend and, you know, has invited him and he's staying over somewhere, then why are they being weird with him and Eggy? 
Or is this like a cute thing? You know, why wouldn't I be? What do you mean? Oh, it's just the way we speak in England. Are oh, you? You know, is it that? I don't like this. I find it very weird. The thing. So. And the weirdest thing about it for me is that if I was going for an Airbnb, then I don't think I'm trying to talk to the host in any capacity. In fact, if they come in the fucking room I'm in and it's not just like a, a shared area, like a corridor, then I'm going to say, what are you doing? <laughs> Get out. <laughs> I'm paying for the room, not for you to come and spy on me. Leave the room immediately. Um, yeah, that's it. That's a different thing. Um, I've had to kind of slow down. That's a different thing anyway, so we'll leave that for a bit. I've had to slow down. <laughs> and change how I speak a little. How I speak a little bit. So it's the way you speak. Is it the things you say in your accent, or is it the way you speak to people? A little bit. The Americans don't like it, it seems. Because they're like, what, what, what? Obviously, the man accent's quite thick anyway. Um, so I kind of had to, have to change it up a little bit. I think that the service here, like the food service, I got this beautiful pizza yesterday. One of the nicest pizzas I've ever had. And then this is what I don't understand as well, right? You know, I showed you those travel vlogs at the start. Where's the travel vlog? Oh, here it is. I recorded like 10 seconds of a pizza really close up. I didn't record, hey, I'm in Chicago, I'm coming for a pizza, so check out the restaurant. This is going to be cool, isn't it? I'll show you the, what, the menu, like cut to menu. Look at this, look at this. I've never seen one like that. We're having the pepperoni monster. Cut to, like, you know, me drinking a Coca-Cola, you know, doing a few, you know, few shots. And then here it is, Way the pizza. Like, where's the fucking travel vlog? Like, why is that even any more difficult than what he's doing just... Like walking up the road, just saying to the phone, this is what I did. And then showing a, a really close-up picture of a pizza to prove it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's fucking weird, this is actually, you want to think about it. For a pizza. On my face. And someone says, on my face. Check for a pizza. On my face. Look at all the pepperoni. Don't mind if I did, do. Look at all the pepperoni. It looks to me like a bar pizza. Like, is he in a restaurant? It doesn't look like it. Like, he's got it really close up, yeah? But when his hand comes in... Pepperoni. Like that, when his hand comes in, you see the size of the pizza is not... Like, you know, it's not that massive. And, like, when you zoom out as well, where, what's the pizza placed on? Is it on a plate and it's overhanging the plate? And we're on a table or we're at a bar? Like, it's a busy environment... Like, is he with someone? Why are we just so zoomed in on the pizza that we don't see any of the environment? Say, one of the nicest pizzas I've ever had. And it's just like, you could make that pizza in England. Pepperoni is the same everywhere in the world. Look at all that pepperoni. Don't mind if I, did, I don't doubt that he's in Chicago. I can hear all the voices in the background being American and all that. You know, I don't doubt it. But I, I'm just like, why are we seeing... Like, it, it, could this be, like, the canteen like, of somewhere rather than, like... I just... You're supposed to be on holiday. You're supposed to be making a travel vlog. And you've gone and had a pizza. So why is it just the pizza really zoomed in? <laughs> Gotta be at least 100 pieces of pepperoni on it. Brilliant. And, I had like a uh, hundred. I said, can I have extra pepperoni? And they gave me like a million pieces of pepperoni. And I'd never seen so many pieces of pepperoni. No, you can't. Because you can't have a million pieces of pepperoni on a pizza. There's not enough space on the pizza. Honestly, I told them. I said I wanted I wanted extra and they gave me a million. No, you can't have a million. I did. You can't. I did. Um, yeah, it's not healthy, is it, that? But... It was, it... Like, don't you want... I thought the other thing in Chicago was they were famous for Chicago deep dish pizzas. So I would have thought that when you were going for this amazing pizza, you would have chosen the Chicago deep dish version of a pizza. And that would have been like a culinary, like, you know, even I not being, you know, massive on the old cheese would probably eat a portion of a slice of Chicago because I'm vegan. I'm not, you know, not promoting it or anything. But in Chicago, do as the Chicagoans. Like, it's a famous dish from Chicago, the deep dish pizza. It's like the famous 
Chicago pizza, isn't it? So what is he doing not having that and filming it as like a vlog? Like, how is this happening? It's a gorgeous pizza. Permission to film? Oh, come on. We're in like 2024 and he's a tourist. He can't get his phone out and just film his pizza and like what's going on. Like, come on. I And anyway, we've I've been to America with cameras and shit. Like, they like it. Like, everyone's filming shit. Like, there's, there's no way in the world Luke would like be shut down in a bar for just filming around in his pizza. Come on. What's he doing? Why is he being so secretive and weird about it all? Like, why is he doing such a strange job on it? What's he doing on his holidays? If he's just going on holidays, that's fine. Like, but why is he going on his holidays, sitting in a bar and wandering about? Just like he could have done this in Manchester. <laughs> Great. So I went into this place. It's called. Um, I can't remember what it's called now. Nicole actually. Kessinger. That's it. But Maybe he's found Nicole Kessinger and he can't tell. And he's, there's a secret thing going on. It does like pizza. She runs a pizza bar in Chicago. Pizza and craft beer. So I went in and you sit down and they bring you over a side plate and a glass of water straight away and Oosh. like what can i get Oosh. you a beer pizza and craft beer so quite often i mean that sounds really hipster quite often i've noticed in america uh from watching other people that are out there really because you know I don't, I don't live out there but uh, a lot of the bars will have really quite good quality bar snack like pizza stuff because then you're going to stay in there and eat longer aren't you in new york they give you a free slice um Maybe it was Hooties. <laughs> Maybe it's that. I just want to quickly check if there's like a Nicole's Pizza in Chicago. Nic how do you spell Kessinger? Nicole. Kessinger. That's because Nicole. It's Nichol. Nichol. I always get that wrong. Nichol's Pizza. Chicago. Did you mean Nicole's Pizza Chicago? Nicolo's Pizza? Nicolo? She could have changed it to Nicolo. Nicolo Kessingerino. So there you go. Nicolo's Pizza. This is it. This is her. All we need to do now is get Alan to Photoshop... Um, Photoshop a bit of this and that on it. Let's look out for some signs that it could be Nicole Kessinger's Pizza. Look out for signs. Well, there's a little child, so that's that's a sign. I think I saw a Cocoldemol in one of the pizzas there. Tiramisu. Is that her hand? Is that her hand? Is that Nicole's hand? We're not seeing the. We've seen the man doing the pizza. Where's the woman? We saw there was a woman. Where's the woman? That's a sign. Look, that's how they. That's a sign. I was going to say something, but I'm not going to say it. Nicolo's Pizza. This is it. This is where she's living. In Chicago, look. Oh, my God. I found Nicole Kessinger. Oh, my God. It must be that. I got a beer, and then you order. And then they bring you over a side plate and a glass of water straight away, and... Like, what can I get you with beer? And I got a beer, and then you order, and they, they check in quite often, and you can see they've got their eyes out, the you know, the checking who might need a bit of service. I think they're a bit more attentive, but then that could be the it could be the tip culture. It could be they're keeping their eye on you. Because I've learnt that uh, a lot of them are on like a lot of the serving staff, the waiters and the servers that spin back this way. They're only on like three dollars an hour, so tips is a big part of it. They go like above and beyond to uh, offer great service, and I believe it's like I got told that eighteen percent tip is standard. If if everything's gone well, eighteen percent. Um, 15% if it was okay, but it could have been better. And then some, someone said to me, and if you do 10%, then you should speak to the manager as well. Hey. Miracle, 34th Street. That's another thing as well, if ever... Um... Hey, hey. Miracle on 34th Street. So, I'm kind of lost now anyway, because I don't know where I am now. <laughs> 
shouldn't have done that. That's got me confused. Uh, <laughs> which way am I going? It's easy, isn't it? Because it's just numbers and that, but I don't remember if I'm going up the numbers or down them. Whenever my phone died and I didn't know where I was or whatever, you can't forget 34th Street. What, is that where you're living? <laughs> Are you doxing yourself on the internet? So, yeah, I've, I've just... When I've been eating out, I've just been tipping 20%. Like, you're not going to sit there working out 18%, are you? Like, getting the bill and dividing it by 100 and times it by 18 and adding it on. So, um, just throw, throw 20% on. Yeah, these houses, oh, I can't go over them. All very, very different. He looks like he's out to rob somewhere. All right, so yeah, it's been a beautiful day today here in Berwyn, here in Chicago. Berwyn? <laughs> What's Berwyn? I've never heard of Berwyn. Well, I don't know anything, do I? So, Berwyn, city of Illinois. City, Ill Illinois. city in Illinois, what do you mean? It's in Chicago, it's not a city in Illinois, it's Chicago. Are you nuts? That's Berwyn there, look. Oh my God, look at it. I am actually surprised. I mean, I know it's this way in America, but it is like SimCity. Look at it, it's just a fucking grid. Like, walloped out like a grid, isn't it? Like, absolutely, it looks like a bloody circuit board. Look at it. It's just all a grid. And like, this is, it makes sense, doesn't it? Because you know where you are, you're walking on the streets and this and that. What was it? You said Miracle on 34th Street. Berwyn, 34th, Chicago. So that's Berwyn, like... <laughs> Look at the houses, they're all really different, isn't they, in that? Here we are. Berwyn, Chicago. Like, when you're down here on ground level, you don't really feel it, that it's like this big grid, but, like, maybe you do when you walk around and everywhere's sort of, like, repeating in the same, in a way, but, um, I know it, it, it's not like a critique of a place, is it, that it's, it's got a grid system. Oh, I've jumped us around now, hang on. Um, but, like, I'm just, I find it so, like, seeing it laid out like that, like, knowing that everyone lives there and it's like a city, yeah, well, it's not this part, is it? This part's the suburbia bit, I suppose, isn't it? And, like, the city's a bit closer in, isn't it? I don't know. I know. I don't know my way around Chicago really, but um, it's strange to me because, like, over where we live in the UK, like just a random one, just Leeds, for example, there, just that random one. Most places are like this. They have a bit of a big road around the mid, around the outside, but on the in inner city centre, it's all a bit higgledy piggledy, and it's grown up around a waterway, maybe, quite often. And, like, you see how it's not all in grids or anything? <laughs> like, there's no good... Like, there's a few bits of grid here and there, like, starting to try and... Like, there's a bit there. <laughs> but, like, in general, it's all just patches and bits and stuff. And then they built a big road around it. <laughs> and that road will connect up to all the other places. Like, on the outer side of the city, you know, it's the same sort of business. These outer skirts, look. This is the equivalent of where Luke is, but for Leeds, isn't it? Like... But there's no grid system. It's all just still a bit higgledy piggledy. Like it, it kind of is designed around big roads, smaller roads, developments and stuff. But you know what I'm saying? Like I just don't feel this sort of sense of regimented. Like over here in Hare Hills, I suppose you've got more grids in the terraced housing, but you just don't feel this sense of like this strict, regimented, routine, repeating pattern. It's much more freeform, much more. Uh, abstract and then like most of our cities are like that so whereas over in America because it was built a lot later it didn't grow up over time in the same way um, come on Scotty where are we here we are they have the opportunity to say like let's plan it out all in grids and it's just like, to me, that looks almost like bars on a prison or something, like the way it's all like, it's weird. 
not critiquing it necessarily. Like I'm not saying it's horrible like it's a prison. I'm just saying like the look of the map. Like it just looks so strange and alien to me like that. So Miracle on 34th Street, anyway. I'm sure if he walked up and down here on Google Maps long enough, we'd spot one of those houses that he was walking past and we'd know where he was. <laughs> but I know where he is in general. Uh, you're going to have to tell me in chat, right? Is this a normal place to go on holiday again, like when you go to Chicago? Maybe there's a cheap Airbnb out here. We'll look in a second. But it looks like a suburban... Like, you might say, I want to go and see the life where the people live, you know, get a, get a view of the real normal life for the people. But this is like family homes out in suburbia. And like, there's nothing to do here for miles around, really, is there? Like, if you want to do anything, you've got to go somewhere else, because like, I mean, there'll be a church, maybe. Is that a church? Or just a house? But like, for miles around, it's just all these houses, isn't it? Well, they have like a bar. He said there's a bar somewhere, wasn't there, that he was going and hanging out at. So there'll be like a bar, you know, somewhere. <laughs> but otherwise, it's just like houses, houses, houses. Now, if I, if, I don't know, I, I don't necessarily know what I would do about Chicago. Like, if you would tell me you have to go to Chicago tomorrow and stay there, um, where I'd feel like most comfortable or whatever, but... Um, I've got no idea what anything's like or anything, but my feel, my like my guess is just that this end here where it's like the city and stuff's going down and it's like, you know, I don't know if you get more shot up here or anything, but like surely, like, you know, I, I, hang on. Can you see it enough? There's Chicago, the map. Like, there's obviously loads of places where I'm saying, like, this is where you'd expect the places to be. And I'm just going to click a random one. Home in Chicago. Like, you get the whole place. Like, this is what I expect of an Airbnb. I mean, it might not be massive or anything, but I don't have anyone coming in, like Luke said, yeah? Um, entire home in Chicago. £100. A, like, this one's down to £63 a night, so it's quite a reasonable deal. Um... Little shower in a little bathroom. Oh, it's just a little apartment thing, isn't it? Bed, separate room. A little bit of a space there. Like, but you don't like you don't need much to do. It's like having your own place, like your own hotel room. Chicago apartments connect to the world there. Look. See, this would annoy me. If I was doing the Airbnb though, I would have to I'd be beholden to the Wi Fi and I wouldn't be able to plug in at the wall, would I? Ah. Um but you know, we're out in Chicago and we've got our own place. I mean, I'd worry a little bit about safety. I don't know enough about this to, to know if this is the best move or not. But that is, um, like, they're not going to show you exact because they don't show the exact place. But, you know, that's there. Like, closer into, like, the actual what's going on, I'm guessing. You know, closer to the, the city centre, to like, you know, to, to Chicago itself, I suppose. Where's Luke hanging out at? <sighs> he said the name of the place and it began with a letter... Uh, Berwin, Berwin, Berwin. Not Berwin management, just Berwin. Oh, this is Berwin anyway. 
Like, it's not any cheaper. <laughs> that one's £57. Room in Lincoln Square. So for £36 a night here, you can get a room. So, like, this is what I'm saying. You know, maybe he's done this, it, which is you get a cheap flight, and instead of spending what I was going to suggest, about £100 a night to have your own place, like, you could spend £36 a night, and you get to share a kitchen with a family that live there. Like, I'm not having this because I'm not going to want to fuck about with people that live there. Um, you do have your own bedroom. I suppose that's an ensuite bathroom. That's like a living space, but it's a room in a bungalow. So, like, when they say room, they don't mean you get the whole place. You get access to shared spaces. You'll share parts of the home. You'll share the bathroom with, like, shared bathroom. I'm not having that. I just don't want to go and share a bathroom with Jane, you know? But Jane's quite happy to have strangers come in and share her bathroom. So, I, I for £36 a night as well, but that's a way of doing it on the night like, on the cheaper side of things and that is in the same area where luke is like you know is it possible he's staying exactly there because there weren't that many in the area at that price this one would be here well it won't tell you exactly where it is will it um On the other hand, actually, if I was staying somewhere like that, I could say to her, look, can I plug in at the fucking wall with my computer because I want to do a stream? But then she's going to be in the house while I do a stream and it's going to be a fucking nightmare. Um... It won't For all the good, the, the, right, listen to this as well, right? For all the good the grid system is, it won't show me 34th Street here on the map, so how do I know where the fuck anything is? It's calling it all West Eastwood and Wilson and stuff. I want to know 34th Street. I don't know about fucking Wilson or anything. Oh, West Lawrence Avenue. Show me 34th Street. That's the whole point of the number system. Be fucking not showing me. <laughs> What's that? Garcia's Restaurant. I'm looking for a little Irish bar. Jubek Jew. No. What's this? The Bad Apple. The bad apple could be the one. I think this is where Luke's gone for his little drinkies. Put the bad apple. Show me a pizza. Show me a pizza. No pizza. But it did that look like craft beers. Four different little craft beers. Didn't it? 25 beers on tap, house-made ketchup. Uh, feels a little bit like a hipster bar. Quinoa side salad, yeah, yeah. Like, in a way, it's fair enough, isn't it? It's, you go to Chicago, you experience a bit of the local, like, it's like living in that little area. It's like what it's like to live in that little area. But spending your money to go and drink in a pub that's basically just a pub. <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> I don't see it myself. To go and live with, um, what's her name? Go and live with Jane for a week and, and, uh, and drink at the Bad Apple. I don't see it myself, but that's a way of like fitting his story together, isn't it? The woman came in. And he didn't quite get on with her. <laughs> £36 a night though, so... £36 a night. And like, you could literally say, I'm going to Chicago and I'm going to do it in under £500, yeah? So £36 a night for five nights is £280. So that's nearly all your budget, but for £200 you can get the flights done. 150 we saw on the cheap flights, cheapest. So you get your cheap flight, you get, you get it all done for £500. But then again, like, if you, like, you, you <laughs> uh, watch this, £500, all-inclusive 
week in Spain. Like, surely you can get an all-inclusive deal to Spain for, like, less than... He's just... Fortnite all-inclusive holiday in Spain with four, seven, eight prices, now three to eight per person. Like, it just sounds like doing that would be so much easier for him. Oh, it's a shorter trip on the plane. It's cheap. It's cheaper. Everything's paid for. Your hotel, your food, everything. Now, I'm just saying you can do what he's done, even like going to Spain or somewhere in Europe, much, much easier and cheaper. And it's probably more attractive in some ways than just like a bar in Chicago. Like, the things that Chicago's got going for it that he's going to go and do are go and watch the Chicago Bulls play basketball. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Kevin's house from home alone. And that's it. He's, like, <laughs> he's going to go to the Great Lake and he's going to do the eclipse, but he didn't realise he was going to do that. But okay, the Great Lake and the eclipse. But she, <laughs> I can't... <laughs> Oh, I just thought a shared bathroom. Is that where she walked in? We'll talk about food in a minute. Yeah, um, a shared bathroom. Did you see that? Uh, he walked. Maybe that's where she walked in. And he went, "Are you all right?" Chicago City is meant to be very nice. It probably will be. Like, uh, I'm not saying it's not, but I'm saying as a holiday destination for a European, it's a strength. Like, if you okay. If you're going to fly all the way to America, maybe it's more expensive in New York. I don't know. But if you're going to fly all the way to America, it's like five, eight hours. It's eight hours, isn't it? He spent eight hours on a plane plus the, the adjoining flight to to, um, to Dublin. Like he spent all 12 hours traveling and he's going to go to Chicago. Usually uh, British people that do that spend like a day or two, maybe an overlay in Chicago and then go on to like New York, Las Vegas, California like they're the big names <laughs> some of us like me might want to go up to uh, Seattle for various reasons um, Texas is popular isn't it people that like music might be drawn to the uh, the Nashville Triangle um, Florida of course you've got Miami and the party zone and uh, Disneyland and all that um, and they're like, there are patches and pockets of all different things that are interesting, I suppose, for different reasons. But you fly from England to New York, and it's faster and it's cheaper like, to go England to New York. And then, like, it's New York. <laughs> so most people who are doing what Luke's doing would have tried to find a cheap way of doing New York. It just seems really weird. And like I said, it's possible that he just did the randomizer and it said, you know, 150 get you to... A get you to Chicago all right then fuck it do it um, and also to spend all that time I mean it's not loads of money necessarily if you're doing it on the cheap but um, to spend all that time and money and to do it and then to arrive there and say I don't really know what's going on so I'll just have a walk about and just see if there's any shops and that and then I'm going to go and watch Chicago Bulls on that's definitely happening but if I'm not doing anything I'll just go to the pub like, it feels like, wouldn't you have done some more research into like what you're going to do for your time and what you expect to see and where you're excited to go? <laughs> like, there's so many... I've got so many questions. I've answered a couple of them there, I think. And I think the main answer, like I said, is that Airbnb provides cheaper... I still can't understand why... Well, I suppose... No, I still don't understand, actually, no. I don't... I still don't understand this. Actually, a lot of these are guest suites. Apart, well, there's an apartment, 166. That's the room, guest favorite, flat. This is all in that area that he he's, he's in. You get the whole flat in that area for 300 pound a night, so that's expensive. So he's in a nice part of Chicago. Oh, he's not going to get shot there. Maybe he thinks it's safer there. And to be there, you have to be a guest because you're not going to be able to afford the whole flat because it's 500 pound. So it, like, it takes the price of your accommodation to a grand and a half. So I'm not getting... I wouldn't get a flat in Lincoln Square. Like, that looks really expensive. But that's specifically that part of Chicago. 
But if you want it anywhere else in Chicago, and I don't know, again, how expensive and um, cheap and scary <laughs> any of it is, but like places that are closer to the city center. And I would just, I would think that certain places in the city center mean you're not just going to get mugged and murdered because it's like the, um, the rough area, but it's so in the center that, you know, you're not going to get rugged. Like, look, little Italy. Little Italy. That's a room. That's not what I want. No, thanks. Uh, show me in the city center a bit more. Hotel. That's a hotel, but £100 a night in a hotel. Like, Luke, for an extra £60 a night, which it's quite a lot on the bill, but he could have his whole, uh, you know, proper hotel stay instead of staying with a woman and sharing a bathroom. £78 up there, hotel again. 95 boutique hotel. So hotel prices range between 70, sorry, 80 and 100. I'm looking for a place, I'm looking for, that's a loft room, interesting. Hotel room, a place to stay, boutique hotel, flat. Maybe they don't do as much Airbnb in uh, Chicago. A flat, there you go. That's a flat though, 121 a night. So, we're doing 3x the budget. Right, this is going to come out at £600 for your accommodation. The other one came out at £300. So, like, we're doubling our accommodation budget. But you get your fucking money's worth, look. <laughs> you get your own flat with your own sofa and do what the fuck you want. Smoke as much as you want, weed-wise. Chill out in your flat. That flat has got a nice big room with a kitchen and a seats for your pizza. <laughs> Like, it's not awful to hang out in your flat while you're there then, yeah? Like, because sometimes you don't want to just be traipsing on the streets. Like, you can hang out in your flat. Uh, it's got all the, the bits and pieces you need in the big kitchen area room. It's got a nice bedroom where you can do what you want in your own bedroom and that woman's not going to walk in. And the same with the bathroom. You can use your own bathroom. So there's a lot of prom, like pro, like, ticks in a box. I like the way they've shown this, the entrance door. So you know that it's got this system... You're going to go through a foyer. You're going to get to your own room, you know, your own apartment door. So there's like layers of security between you and Chicago. <laughs> but as much as anyone who lives in an apartment would have. And that's quite cool to live in an apartment like that for a week, isn't it, in Chicago, I think. You know, okay, it might be more dangerous. People might bust in with guns and rob you or some shit. But, you know, come on, we're staying in an apartment in a, a centre of a city, so it can't be that bad. There's an ATM machine over the road. Now, I'd probably want that more than I'd want to stay with that lady. I know that it's a bit more expensive. So maybe it's that, that it's just like it's too expensive. But that was £74 a night. So, you know, the ladies one was £40 a night. It's double the price, yeah, but it's... And if you feel scared, you can go in a hotel for £100 a night and it's just a hotel, so... I know it gets expensive, but I suppose you can't afford... But if you listen, if you can't afford the accommodation in Chicago, why are you so desperate to fucking go there? <laughs> like, you know, this one, look. This is a room in Chicago, look. This is 40... This is £23 a night. This is even cheaper. £23 a night. You stay with Adriana. She's got a co-host, Alejandra. So don't... And, and Ali... These sound like girls' names. If I'm going to stay with three ladies, I'm going there. Fuck it. They'd like me. We'd have a good time. Is this what happens? Is you just go and stay with a few lovely ladies? They'll probably get on at you to clean the kitchen. <laughs> Shared full bathroom. Yeah, with two, with three ladies. It's a bit weird, isn't it, in a way? Alejandra's letting me share with her bathroom. I have to stay on the bunk bed. Look. I'd be tempted to try that, though. That's not safe, is it? Oh, I see. You just let yourself into a little room. So 
So it's not like, oh my God, it's not like a house where they all live. I've, got, I've just figured it out. It's not like a house where they all live and they're like, you know, oh, come and sit in the lounge and we'll all eat pizza. Like you open the front door as if it's like an apartment complex and then you go into your own little room, don't you? And you can share the bathroom and share the kitchen, but no one does. They all stay in their own little room. And Alejandra does live there, but she ain't fucking about in the kitchen with you. Like, go in the bathroom whenever you want, if you want, but that's you in your room. You're not like, you're not, not, look, they're not showing you the rest of the house. Well, they are actually, look, here's the, here's the kitchen. But I, I get the vibe now. Like, everyone's got their own room and it's all locked on every room. I thought you'd just be like, you know, Alejandra and her mates just lived in a house and you can just come and live there. <laughs> it's not like that at all, is it? Like, no one's got any of their stuff out in the kitchen or nothing. Well, that one's a bit harsh and not homely. But it's cheap, isn't it? Close to downtown. Garfield Park looks nice. I wonder if they've got anywhere out there. No. A shame. Where's the other ones? Where have they all gone? Wait, where's your Airbnb map there? Go away, that one. Garfield Park, £66 a night, look. A room here, in this place. Look at this place. But they're all rooms, aren't they? So, like, it looks really nice, but it's got the same problem, which is like, I'm staying at someone else's house. So, hi, don't mind me in your kitchen smoking fucking weed and trying to do my stream like can you leave me alone for a bit uh no i don't know i'm not buying it like you know I, but there's lots of rooms available warm room it's, it's described it says warm room but i'd expect it would be warm yeah so anyway yeah i'm doing far too long on airbnbs in chicago the bad apple we think he might be going to drink at the bad apple remember that one He'd have been better off in Benidorm. <laughs> Had a nice big venture around both areas. So these houses in this area where I'm staying, they just scream, pardon the pun, but they just scream horror movie houses. You can just imagine Ghostface just jumping out now and slashing me up. Do you think he said that to the woman that he's staying with? You know, she's like, are you okay? And she's like, what? Do you think he said, oh, I'm, I'm here to do some filming. Like, these houses, they're just like the fucking horror movies, aren't they? Where people stab each other up. And she's like, sorry, what? I didn't quite catch that with your accent. He's like, stab each other up and that. I've, sorry, I've had two Guinnesses on the plane. And then two pints of wine. So I'm a bit fucking drunk and that. I got an Uber on the way back. Is there somewhere around here that we can get super noodles? They're all completely different as well. It's like obviously back back where we live. Like, listen, the host thing. I think it it depends on who you are and what your situation is and what's going on. Like, it could really suit certain people. Certainly, people who are more like um, what's the name who did the, the the house. You know, if you're a bit like her, then you might think, oh, I'm, I identify with her, so I'm going to enjoy living in that style and space. Like maybe that would help in some way you know if like the house was more to my taste and my style then i might like it more and then i might think this person's might be fun or like it might be nice to have someone that's local that i can you know if you're a bit more grown up and civilized maybe than just wanting to go there and do the debauchery and the wrecking the place like i do ha huh. no i don't want to wreck anywhere but you know i want to just sort of smoke weed and chill and do whatever don't i, I don't want um that lady <laughs> living in the house at the same time but in general, I mean, there's a possibility that it might be pos positive to some people who want to sort of chill in this sort of environment. But, like... <laughs> What's Luke doing wandering around here on his... Like, he's on his holidays, and he's taking a walk around the, the houses just and saying, like, people would get all murdered around here, wouldn't they? <laughs> like, the police will have calls. I think you were saying something in your phone, buddy, about stabbing someone. Could you just put down the phone and come over here? 
It's like obviously back back where we live. Obviously back where we like, live, no one gets stabbed, do they? The I mean, everyone gets stabbed, don't they? Of the homes are like, like terraces, aren't you? Or the middle class kind of, uh, well, the working class should I say, like terraces, like rows and rows of them. It's like you know, like Coronation Street. I mean, look at that one yeah. there. Luke, you're not walking around the <laughs> the equivalent of terraced houses in Chicago here, are you? Like there are areas in Chicago that will seem more familiar in terms of the like the working class atmosphere than this. <laughs> oh, bless him. And also there are parts of the UK where houses are individual and architecture and on a road, but this is different in America. I do, I do accept it. <laughs> You're telling me some sketchy shit's not gone on in there. It's like the amateur horror. Well, yeah, I'm just going to take you around the neighborhood. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. This is Berwyn. It's where Bob Odenkirk, who plays Saul Goodman in Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad lives. Better Call Saul! <laughs> um, Bob from Better Call Saul lives in this area. Is this why you've gone on holiday there? Another little brick one. Again, this, this one here. No, it's just a bonus, isn't it? It's just... It just screams stereotypical US uh, US house. And this is why I wanted to... It just screams stereotypical US house. <laughs> That's your architecture. With coming to Chicago, I didn't want to stay in the city. <laughs> I wanted to stay. I'm about 10 miles out because I wanted to um, kind of live, you know, live in the neighbourhoods and there isn't many people that don't double take once I uh, start talking in this Mancunian accent. Yeah, so what he said then was he didn't want to live in the city, he wanted to stay out, he, what, he like he chose this because he wanted to live like, you know, I want to live like common people. Well, obviously I don't want to stay in the fucking ghetto, do I? I'm going to stay in the nice bit. Um, <laughs> but then the people he's meeting on the street when he's walking around here are like, are you from around here, buddy? Are you okay? You lost? We have a neighbourhood watch around here and, and we keep an eye on our neighbours. And he's like, yeah, I'm from Manchester, innit? Like, so, what's up? And they're like, sorry, buddy, are you okay? You lost? I said we have a neighbourhood watch around here. <laughs> so, yeah, we're just going for a little wander. Check out some of these houses. Right, if it's pitch black on this road... You're locked out and you're near the Amateur Vol Horror House and you hear that going off. Jesus Christ. Get the toilet paper out. Beautiful neighbourhood. Beautiful day. Been down to Chicago today. Just cross over. It's almost like every house has kind of been built by like the owners. I know they probably haven't, but because they're just all unique like every single house is completely so let's take that one there right so like okay looks like that 3513 uh, it's not this one then This is Cicero, I don't know. That's nearby though, look. anywhere couldn't it now, i don't know why i'm even trying to find the exact house i don't think it matters it's just it's you know just occurred to me that he's showing me the front of a house and because of that i could probably like you know find exactly where it is and then that one just the stairs are different and the, like, the layout's different and then that one different that's a bit of a weird looking one it really 
really nice. I wonder why really this is nice actually. Area. I wonder why this is. Why are all the houses in Bert in different? Berwyn, also known as the city of homes, is far from your average cookie cutter suburb. When you think Berwyn, bungalows mostly come to mind. Yes, Berwyn's rich history is reflected in one of the most significant collections of Chicago style bungalows in the nation today. But it may surprise you just how much variety there is in Berwyn's affordable housing stock. There's a reason why Berwyn is known as the city of homes, after all. Ranging from Victorians and Tudor revivals to workmen's cottages and American four squares, and of course bungalows, your dream home awaits you. For first time home buyers or those looking to relocate, Berwyn's rich affordable housing stock gives you plenty to choose from. Not only does Berwyn have an eclectic mix of houses, but I, all right, I get it, it's good. Berwyn's known in the city of homes. That's a cut and paste from what you just said. Victorians. They were mass produced at the time and easily shipped thanks to the widespread train routes that were established. Sorry, many of the materials required in building a Victorian home were being mass produced at the time. American four squares were some of the first homes built in Berwyn, 1910s, simplicity, workmen's cottages, 1.5 stories, pointed roofs, and they have the same interior floor plan. So the interiors can be very similar but the outside can be very different. So that's interesting, isn't it? A lot of those buildings will actually be quite similar on the inside. Uh, Tudor revivals, 1940s. So what you're saying is that a lot of different houses have been like thrown in there at different times. Maybe some plots have been knocked down, rebuilt. and uh, But Berwyn's bungalows were generally built in the 1920s to the 1930s. Bungalows in a block were sometimes built by the same workers. Berwyn will always be unique and different to its neighbours. The roof line, the style of shingles, limestone accents, and even the style of decorative red-faced brick is different from house to house. The bungalows in Berwyn are also full of ornamental details such as tiled roofs, stained glass windows, checkerboard brick patterns, and intricate limestone insets. It's just something they've decided to do in Berwyn, isn't it? It's like they've just absolutely decided to say every house is going to be different. Even if you've got the same internal floor plan, we're having every house different. So bear that in mind when you're putting them in. We've had them put in in three different, like, f flood, like, there was a, a time when we put in a load of them, and then there was a time when we put in a bunch more, and there was a time when we put in a few more. And every time we've decided to make everyone different. It is a feature of the area. And without much explanation other than they just fucking did it. Uh, I suppose this is when you start building loads of houses from 1910 onwards, isn't it? Like you, in the, like in the UK, we've already got loads of different houses that look all different because our houses have been built since like 600 AD <laughs> or some shit. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, so it, it, we've got lots of different styles of houses because we've got Victorian and Tudor and all that because those houses were built in the Victorian and Tudor times, but they just put all the different styles in. Like, all the different architectural styles now exist in 1910. Victorian, Tudor, all of them. Like, and you can choose what you want when you build a house these days. So, when we put them in, should we do them all Victorian style? No, no, no. Let's do one Victorian, one Tudor, one this, one that. Fuck it. What if we've got the internal floor plan fairly similar? That's great. It makes it easier to throw them all up and just fancy up the outside. Okay, now I understand it. Thanks very much, Luke, for, tr for treating me to that. I've learned something. If you ever come to Chicago. So that one with the pointed roof there, that's a workman's cottage. Berwyn. There are these lot of flags in the grass. Don't ask why. Maybe it's a workman's cottage. Those flags in the grass are where the bullet casings fell and the police have to come and do the marking the the crime scene. A little yellow house. A little so yellow house. <laughs> turns out that when you see in films that the people that deliver papers ride past on a bike and throw it. Like, so it turns out that could be true because there's a newspaper just on someone's garden, but it's in a bag because it's raining. So is it not possible that Luke should have walked down that street with his phone and said, like, because all it took was like two minutes of learning, yeah? 
for me, for all of us, two minutes. So what Luke should have done is found that out and walked down the street and said, I'm in Berwyn and all the houses in Berwyn are different because, and like, it might be a fucking weird video to do on his channel. Like, it might have nothing to do with anything. But that's, like, instead of just like walking around going, I don't know what the fuck's going on around here, but everything looks well weird. <laughs> like, he could have just like done something interesting. Um, Instead, he's got a newspaper in a bag on the on the pavement. Sorry, on the on the drive. So yeah, it looks like they do just launch the papers. Bit of a different vibe today going on. Um, Day three. Mm, not as nice. There's all the uh, horror movie houses over there. They're not horror movie houses. Creepy, creepy, creepy. <laughs> Creepest, creepest, creepest. <laughs> I don't know why I did that here. I just wanted to do it, didn't I? Now we've done it. But uh, the community post says he's going to film the eclipse. So I hope he enjoys filming the eclipse in the Bohemian Club with the Bohemian Club induction. And uh, I can't just... Like, bearing in mind, seven days ago, he said he was going... Then three days, he said he was going on a Thursday. Three days ago, I, he's put up he's put up three videos surrounding this trip to, to Chicago and he's promised it for a little while. And so far what we've seen him do is walk on a street. Now we know he's gone because he's in the airport and you've seen him drink a Guinness in the airport, yeah? And you know he's there because he's walking on a street in Chicago. And I'm not going to say he's not. I'm saying he is, yeah? But the only other thing that you've seen of any part of his holiday is a, a pizza really close up. Like, just a pizza really close up and a street that he's walking on. Like, who does that? And you're talking about... I mean, I know he filmed the, the, the plane. I know he's filmed the plane. Listen, I know he's filmed the plane. But who goes on holiday and does a vlog for 10 minutes and films walking on a street and a pizza really close up we've got a couple of shorts well i say a couple we've got one short this is interesting as well we've got one short <laughs> you ready that guy on the skateboard he's doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i get 250 quid for that from you being framed so he's just gone past me on his skateboard which he's now underneath a car because <laughs> he slipped on his ass like a nugget so he just came past me on it and he was all like cocky and stuff and he said thanks for carrying my baby i went what he said thanks for carrying my baby so i was just like yeah anytime no problem brother and then he he like rode off and then i got my phone out to just tell you what i've just told you and then he Decked in, fell on his ass. So I admire a dry or a different sense of humour to the norm. The fact that he he said that and then he fell on his ass just makes it just a perfect little anecdote. To be honest with you, that guy on the skateboard, he's doing. <laughs> Okay, let's analyse this a little bit. Big ups in chat, Jojo Cretin, sing it a lint. Big ups. Linda Little Legs. Big ups, Childlike Empress. Did anyone get to see the eclipse? Um, I certainly didn't because it didn't happen in England, so fuck the eclipse. Um, we had a couple in chat earlier who were worried about the CERN particle collider starting up, and maybe they're still here, or maybe they're gone now because the CERN particle collider might have sped up, sped up. But yeah, big ups to anyone in chat who saw the eclipse. Um, I want to play the cat game on Genshin Impact in a minute, but this is gonna—we're gonna have to discuss this. Like, this is in New. This is in Chicago, yeah. This isn't in Manchester, is it? This is Chicago. How are we saying? <laughs> yeah, I get two hundred and fifty quid for that from you being framed. So he's just gone past me on his skateboard, which he's now underneath a car. <laughs> Because he slipped on his ass like a nugget. So he just came past me. That's 
that's what I mean, Starrays. Like someone skateboards past you and you're walking on your own in Chicago and it's the number one murder capital of the world, <laughs> whatever. I mean, it's not the number one murder capital of the world, but you know what I mean? Like, and like, where are you and what are you doing on your own in Chicago, yeah? And someone skateboards past you and they, do, they apparently he's done this. On it and he was all like cocky and stuff and he said... Cocky, he skateboarded past him and he was all cocky. Thanks for carrying my baby. And he said, thanks for carrying my baby. Did he say that? What does that mean? Thanks for carrying my baby. What does that mean? Who says that to someone? Did Luke misinterpret it? Did he mishear him? Thanks for getting out of the way. Thanks for getting out of the way. Thanks for carrying my baby. Thanks for getting away. Like, did he... Thanks for carrying my baby. Like, what... Is there something in Chicago that I don't know about that in America, like, that might mean something? You know, because I'm British, so I don't know. Is thanks for... If someone went past you on a skateboard in the street and said, thanks for carrying my baby, would you know what that meant? Maybe the guy was on the phone. Maybe that, yeah. We're not getting any answers. I find it really weird that the guy even said that, yeah? And if I was in Chicago and someone skateboarded past me and said something fucking weird to me in the street and I was on my own like this, I, I suppose I might pull the phone out for my own protection. But to be honest, <laughs> I might be thinking about walking the other fucking way and just like, you know, just ducking out of the situation. I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know if I'd follow them down the street filming them. Like, it's kind of an aggressive move. Maybe Luke feels confident about it. Maybe he feels it's like a defence. Like move. Maybe Luke isn't it? Like I, I see him as being a like. I would think of him to retire away from conflict in the street. But maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's like you know up for it. Um, I think I was going to get robbed. Yeah, exactly. I, I like me personally. I think right. You're going up there on your skateboard and you can't see me right now because you've gone past me on your skateboard. I'm just going to turn and just duck away. Like, I don't care if I'm around the wrong corner or something. I'm just out of sight for a minute. I'm just going to turn and duck away and I'm just going to assess what I think I want to do next. Like, I don't want that person, like, keeping eyes on me, tabs on me, following me up the street. Um, like, if I have to call an Uber or, you know, go down a different... I, I don't want to wander around the wrong streets in Chicago, you know. I'm, I hope I'm already not making that mistake here. But, like, you know what I mean? I don't think I'd just follow them up the street and just be like, well, let's hope they're not fucking weird, eh? Like, you just run. But if you run and you're running the same direction, like they've gone past you on the skateboard. So you run towards them. Like that's a problem, isn't it? So like where are you running to? Because I assume you want to go this way. So my like my first instinct, like I said, is to just change my plan and act erratically so that like because here's the thing, if they're just going up the street on their way and I go the other way and they turn back and follow me, now we've really got a problem. Because like they're not just doing what they're doing, they're turning back and following me. So now I know immediately that we've, I've, I, you know, and I've also put distance between me and I've made that, um, I've like, you know, discovered it. When I duck around the corner, what they might do is they might turn back and follow me. I might see them going past and I might think, fuck you, you fucker. You didn't know I ducked around this little corner, but you went looking for me and you've gone past that way now. And then I'd be off. I'd be gone. I, I'm just thinking of um, like survival instinct on a street where I don't know anything and I'm in Chicago and they might have a gun. Like, you know, I, but yeah, and during all that all that time, I would probably get my phone out and like call a taxi slash Uber or I don't want to call the police at this stage. But, you know, I think I'm not having a good time walking on this street. I feel vulnerable. Someone's just like done something weird. Now's the Uber. <laughs> now it's time for the Uber. And so if the things did kick off, at least the Uber would be on the way. Like, do you know what I mean? It just feels like Luke's interpretation of this situation is to get his phone out and film it. And the guy fell off his skateboard. And I, I would think, well, the guy's going to be even more eggy now. He's fallen off his skateboard. So, like, maybe this guy's not a big imposing chuffer. And maybe they don't have to be because maybe they've just got a gun. Like, what the fuck were they saying to him? Why did they say it? And why did he film it? 
I went, what? He said, thanks for carrying my baby. So I was just like, yeah, anytime, no problem, brother. And then he... I do also understand this. Like, if they're non-threatening, like, if, if they were, like, do you know what I'm saying this? Like, you know, in Chicago, I don't know this person, I can't see them there in the distance, but like, if they're non-threatening, if they're just a young kid on a skateboard and they said something stupid, then I'd just be like, yeah, whatever, and, like, just carry on walking, obviously, like... You know, I probably just wouldn't bother myself with, with minor shit, but like, I'm not trying to like make it scary or weird, but you know, I can't see them there in the distance. We're in Chicago. It just feels like Luke's just like, um, is it brave or is it stupid to be filming this guy fall off his skateboard? Like, well, if the guy comes over and says, delete that video. <laughs> like, I'm not deleting it. I'm in the fucking right. I can film what I want. <laughs> yeah, okay. Kicking off in Chicago with strangers like rode off and then I got my phone out to just but then America is a bit like that isn't it America is a bit like that you know you just say to somebody no I'm fucking doing what I want I'm in America fuck you and they're like well I have to eat that because it's America so tell you what I've just told you and then he decked in fell on his ass so I admire a dry like he's a literally following now at this point different sense of humour to the norm <laughs> and like he's talking on his phone maybe he's doing this because it makes him look like he's talking to someone on his phone and he's like you know making the guy aware that I've got my phone out, I'm talking to someone, don't come and attack me, you know. The fact that he, he said that and then he fell on his ass just makes it just a perfect little anecdote, to be honest with you. That guy on the skateboard, he's doing... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd get 250 quid for that from you being framed. So he's just gone past me on his skateboard, which he's now underneath a car. Because he slipped on his ass like a <laughs> nugget. So he just came past me on it and he was all like cocky and stuff. And he said, thanks for carrying my baby. I went, what? He said, thanks for carrying my baby. So I was just like, yeah, anytime, no problem, brother. And then he, he like rode off. And then I got my phone out to just tell you what I've just told you. And then he decked in, fell on his ass. I think Luke sounds a bit scared, to be honest. Do you know what I mean? I think he's painted this, like, to say, instant karma, and, like, he's actually talking with bravado, but I think he actually sounds a bit worried and a bit scared. And the way he says, and I've said what I've just told you, like, it's almost like he's saying it as if to pretend like he's on a phone call. You know, like, you know, like you're being reported, mate, so just leave it. So, oh, I admire a dry or a different sense of humour to the norm. The fact that he, he said that, and then he fell. And, and also, what's, where is he and what's he doing at, at night time now? Because it looks just like what he was doing earlier, which is wandering around on the street. On his ass just makes it just a perfect little anecdote, to be honest with is you. He on his way, is he on his way to or from somewhere? Is he on his way to or from somewhere? And how does he manage to catch the guy on the skateboard falling over as well? Lucky. The guy's skating off. He's like, so is the guy just literally skated past him at this moment and said, thanks for holding my baby. And then he's off. So actually, I wouldn't worry so much as well, myself personally, because he's skating off, like he's going away. Unless he's going to go and lie in wait for me. If he wanted to altercate, with, you know, if he wanted to have an altercation, he'd stick around and altercate, wouldn't he? So he's skated off. He's just like, he's just gone past him on his skateboard, hasn't he? What are you doing? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd get 250 quid for that from you being framed. So he's just gone past me on his skateboard, which he's, now underneath a car because <laughs> he slipped on his ass like a nugget so he just came past me on it and he was all like cocky and stuff and he said thanks for carrying my baby i went what he said thanks for carrying my baby so i was just like yeah anytime no problem brother and then he he like rode off and then i got my phone out to just tell you what i've just told you and then he decked in fell on his ass so i admire now, do you think he could have been... I wonder whether he could have been trying to sell him something, like, you know, like, fentanyl or... Like, you know, thanks for carrying could have been fent... Could, like, thanks for carrying my baby. Like, you know... Like, he could have just... Luke could have totally misinterpreted what the guy was saying and he could have just been saying, like, street slang for a name of a drug or something, like, you know... Fancy carrying a... Fancy carrying a... A, a bluey or, like, you know, fentacane in a bluey or... You know, something like that. Like, and Luke just be like, what? Just, Thanks for carrying my baby. And then he skateboarded off as well. And Luke's like, yeah, this is a normal thing, so I'm just going to video it. Anyway, 
That's, that's the story of Luke tonight. I'm really tired and I've had enough of that. And of course, Nicole Kessinger lives at Chicago at the pizza place. So we've solved that mystery as well. So that's good. All these mysteries and more will be solved. 